Hey, wonderful people. So I posted this sh very short film, which I called After Trinity. I woke up one morning with this incredible realization that I had failed to communicate something really important about society, about what actually happened after World War II. I think the film Oppenheimer explores this, and that's the fact that the Manhattan Project actually changes modern history. Everything post-Manhattan Project, post the atomic bomb, post the Trinity explosion, is new and is different. I can't overemphasize how brilliant, and we were fighting a known enemy, that turning a blackboard concept, a thought experiment by Albert Einstein, and a lot of research into neutrons and chain reactions, into a nuts and bolts bomb, an actual thing that blew up, an explosion, harnessing an unknown force of the universe. I mean, it was incredible. The two leading players, Rob Oppenheimer and General Groves, changed the world. Groves managed to supply Oppie with everything that he needed. And he didn't know what Oppie would need. You couldn't go out and buy uranium-235. Plutonium was an incredible short supply and only just kind of fabricated. There were no kind of atom bomb parts. And Oppenheimer got together a team of physicists and then later engineers and explosive experts to actually make a concept on a blackboard into a nuts and bolt device, the gadget, which he exploded at Trinity. But not only did it end the war, very specific word end, radar won the war, the atomic bomb ended World War II with multiple bombs onto Japan. It opened Pandora's box, actually literally opened Pandora's box, her box, because the military realized that you could take a physics concept, an idea, an unknown force of nature that nobody else had and weaponize it. That was what was inside Pandora's box and the lid had been opened by the Manhattan Project. So when the military looked deeper inside the concept of the box, wouldn't it be brilliant if there were other physics, vague ideas of the unknown, not off-the-shelf practical weapons, but a new way of fighting war using advanced physics? And that's what happened. After World War II, the box was not shut. More and more bigger and better or more horrific physics was developed. I mean, Edward Teller is the classic first example. We had an atom bomb. We had a fission bomb. But imagine having a hydrogen fusion bomb. We didn't need it. But it was far too attractive, far too tempting not to actually build. So they went ahead and built literally a doomsday weapon. The Tsar Bomber, let me reveal to you, was the Soviet Union's way of saying we could build an ultimate weapon that would ignite the whole atmosphere on Earth. There is a tipping point. The Trinity Project never got hot enough. There was never really a risk, although it was assessed, of igniting the planet's atmosphere or water. But a hydrogen bomb can be scaled with tritium to actually do that. And the Tsar Bomber, the Soviet test, got right to that edge. It was truly terrifying. They told the world they had the doomsday weapon. Because it makes sense for the Soviet Union to bury in a bunker somewhere a doomsday weapon, as is discussed in Dr. Strangelove. Thank you, Stanley Kubrick. A weapon so terrifying, so automatic, that you only need one of them. Again, physics was used. And military weaponization secrecy 
was now the norm. There's projects in the 50s where they exploded atom bombs in space. They wanted to affect our ionosphere, which they did. There's projects later on that looks at gravity alteration, possibly reducing gravity. I don't think they came to much, but very out there science for the military. These were all military funded. In the 1960s, British physics was at the forefront of metamaterials, stealth and radar technology. British radar is the best in the world. It can see stealth aircraft. Stealth aircraft from the US Air Force are tested in Great Britain because Britain has the technology just to see them. Companies such as Marconi, later on BAE and BAE Systems, which is just an umbrella name for lots of defense contractors, built metamaterials. Radar reflecting, not absorbing, but attenuating radar energy for so-called stealthy aircraft. The universities I've been associated with, one that I taught at, slight dig at people who don't call me a professor. At the time, I didn't call myself a professor. I was just there. Are funded by the military. Many physics departments at leading universities in Britain, no doubt in the US as well, actually get their major funding from defense contractors or their government to explore the physics of weapons. The weaponization of physics is probably what you're going to be working on, a high-paid job with a physics degree. And that leads us on nicely to what happened at Rendlesham Forest. British physics was demonstrated and used to do something, possibly unleash a force of nature that they didn't expect, but it was British military physics that was definitely involved. As I've discussed, Cobra Mist was a secret, but it was a secret of physics that we need to understand. And now here's a big statement. The physics of the unknown phenomenon, the highly strange, could be a weapon. The military are looking at how they might work, but more so, how they might be exploited. So when we see the unknown at Calvin, when we see the Tic Tac, when we see a glowing object in the sky, is it alien? Or is it a technology that we've learned to master? Is it a new Manhattan project? Is it taking a concept from the blackboard and turning it into a nuts and bolts device? That's what really interests me. Of course, they might be aliens, but an even more intriguing question is, are they aliens and have we developed their physics? I guess for now, the truth is out there. After Trinity, the world changed. The immeasurable success of turning a thought experiment into a weapon was the real reward. Driven by the fear of losing, the fear of the enemy making the weapon first, we who were fighting evil mustered every known resource to be first, to build the ultimate weapon of death. We turned equations into nuts and bolts. We evoked ideas about the unknown into a device. That's what changed the world. And Pandora's box could not be closed after a mere idea exploded and stopped World War II. The idea of harnessing the unknown building the blackboard equation, unleashing the power of the universe was too attractive to abandon. 
after its terrible success. Since the Manhattan Project, physics has remained dark, funded by men who seek new weapons, weapons of the unknown, weapons of science. A science now funded to kill humanity, not benefit mankind. But Trinity was not the end, but the beginning of an era where science was used and became the destroyer of worlds. That choice was made. Four generations after Trinity, we still live in that world today. The world where physics is weaponized. <laughs>